source framing up this new floor. Now that it's done, it's time to pop the sheets back down. Now, in the interest of being really resourceful, I'm actually getting Zach to scrape the glue off the back of these sheets because they are in perfect condition and can completely be reused again. And we can move on to framing up the walls. As you know, in this room, I absolutely was done with battening. With that in mind, we're framing out around the window on the northwest side. We're framing out the western side. There'll be cabinetry against the southern side. And on the eastern side, in the interest of not having enough width in the room to fit in my cabinetry, I'm going a direct stick onto the brick. Now this does mean that my sill on that northwestern side is going to be quite deep on my window. That was a conversation I had to have with our spec team from Cotton Glass to make sure that we're all on the same page before that window started to be manufactured. Framing is done. Bring in the super check. That's right guys, given that this is going to be a workspace just like the living room was, I am going with super check in here. We're going to have tiles leaning against the walls, we're going to have samples and design work and mood boards all over the walls once these are finished, so I need to make sure I have the most durable as well as the most acoustic conscious board I can get, and hence I am going super check all around the walls. many people that don't love built-in cabinetry and the feeling that I'm going for in this room is definitely that really bespoke, considered, library, you know, comforting feeling where myself and my clients can in comfort and in a beautiful light-filled room make decisions about the, the homes and the spaces they want to create but not everyone can afford custom cabinetry. So I'm gonna be showing you here exactly how you can hack with some flat pack from Ikea. And the first step naturally for poor Zach from Team Ferris is to build the flat packs. It is a job that not many people wanna do, or there's a few that may, but Zach has risen to the challenge and he's putting together these four. One of the things to keep in mind when you're doing a hybrid cabinetry wall like this, is that there is a little bit of to and fro. You really do need your cabinets in place before you start framing up any other shelving or walls around it. Now that the cabinets are built and they're in their resting location, it's time for us to build the rest of that wall around that cabinetry so it looks like it was custom and fully inbuilt. First things first, Regan will frame up the wall above the cabinetry and then he's going to insert a bulkhead so that our corners will run in line with the front of the cabinetry and hence it will feel completely integrated into the space. One man in, one man out. Zach's moving on to the door whilst the Hunter Lining Projects team come in and finish sheeting and square setting the bulkhead above the cabinetry. We are one step closer to this room being done. A huge week in the design studio room this week. So we've sheeted, we have set, the new floors in, the new ceiling is up and has been gyp rocked. We've got the super check on the walls, which is gonna be so great when I'm using this as a design studio and when I have clients in here because the acoustic qualities are just awesome. I'm feeling like we're on track. I might be a little overconfident, but I'm just going to run with it for now. Thanks for watching this episode of my 1880s house restoration. If you'd like to know more about Carrington House, see other rooms we've done or will be doing, check out the products that we've used 
our trade and supplier team, as well as get all the behind the scenes footage and all the specifications, colors and finishes I've chosen for every space, then head on over to my website, naomifindlay.com forward slash Carrington House and everything you need will be right there.